Do you know what regret is? Have you ever regretted something? Regret it so much that you would trade anything, anything at all to go back in time and change one thing, just one thing. You always hear about drunk driving, the dangers, be careful, don't drink, all the tragedies. I did too. I was warned, I thought twice, now my friend Chris is dead. Think about it every day. I will think about it every day for the rest of my life. Just this past May, my life was going great. In a split second, everything changed. Because of my actions, Chris Mason is dead. Now, I'm a convicted criminal. Have you ever regretted something? My name is Sean, I'm 21 years old, and I'm from Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Well, we are Chris Mason's parents. Um, I'm Amanda Ochoa, and I'm 19 years old, and I lived right next to Chris, so. I'm Jennifer Mahalik, and I lived in Huntington, and I knew Chris from high school. Uh, well, my name is Bill, and I'm Chris's older brother. I was at college, had three great roommates, just having a good time. We enjoyed going out, playing pool, shooting darts. I was really interested in cars, working on them, and eventually owning my own shop. On May 6th, uh, my lead my girlfriend and I were having dinner and we decided that we were going to move back to Indiana. Uh, one of the big parts of my decision was is that I would be around Chris again. I've been in Dallas for five years. So. so I was going to wake up Saturday morning and call my parents and tell them that I was coming home. Then instead, they called me. <laughs> it's just hard because, I mean, he's a part of your life. I grew up with him. He was, I moved here from Utah, and he was my first friend. I mean, I grew up with him. I rode to school every day with him. We'd get on the bus together in elementary school. And just going from that to going to not having him at all here anymore is just totally different. It's hard because, I mean, he, he was like my brother and it's just something that you can't explain. Me and a couple of my roommates went out to visit a friend of ours from school that lived in Indiana. We got there, ended up that I had the only car available once his girlfriend had to go home at 11 o'clock. So we went to a party, campfire. I had a few drinks and my roommate told me he'd drive so I thought everything would be okay. So we got in the car after I had a few drinks and he drove. He was sober, he didn't have anything to drink. We drove to the next party. I decided it was my turn not to drink and let them have a good time. So I didn't have any drinks and I let them drink, told them to have fun, drink, you know, I'd just hang out. So that's what we did. Four hours later or so, I felt 100% sober. Yeah, I thought I was 100% sober. We got in the car, and one of the kids who'd never been in my car before asked me to show him what the car's got. In that split second, I made the worst decision of my life. I did it. We went about 120, and road ahead took a funny intersection, and all the people in the car were intoxicated and you know, no one could have given me the heads up of where the road was going. And on top of it, to make matters worse, I had alcohol in my system, so I wasn't, my reactions were slower, it changed everything. The road took a funny intersection and the car went straight instead of on the road. We hit a tree and flipped. Cops came and 
I looked around me and I saw, you know, four people, including myself, and I knew right away that something was wrong. I went in the car and I saw my friend Chris hanging upside down. And then after that, the police came and breathalyzed me and took me away, leaving me in the shadows of what was really going on, how my friend was doing, if he was going to make it, if anyone was bad, badly hurt, I didn't even know at the time. I just knew that my friend Chris was definitely going to be hurt. about 2.15 that morning from one of the passengers in the car. And I could tell by his voice that something was very wrong. He said, is this Chris's dad? And I said, yes. And he said, Chris has been hurt really bad. He said, there's been an accident and you need to come. We yelled, where's Chris? And all they could do was point. And then we saw Chris laying on the ground by the car. And they wouldn't let us get close to him. They just put a trach in. They said that the helicopter was coming to get him. And that, and that we needed to leave and meet them at the hospital. And I just asked, is he breathing? And they said, yes, he's breathing. So that was just the beginning of an extremely long day. They told us they may have to take his leg off in order to prevent the bleeding. Or to stop to the stop bleeding. bleeding. Yeah. And so they did. They took him to surgery and they, they removed his leg. But they said that uh, you know, he had lost so much blood that there had been damage to his brain. Chris didn't want to be a vegetable. We understood how much he loved living and having fun with his friends. So we made the choice to remove his life support. I spent the weekend in jail and the entire three days I was there, I couldn't stop thinking about what was going on with him. There was no way for me to find out. I was pretty much locked away from you know, what was going on. I wasn't worried about myself being in jail. I wasn't worried about any of that. I was just worried about what happened to Chris. I knew he was in the hospital. I didn't know how serious it was. I didn't know how not serious it was. I just sat there worrying for three days, hoping and praying that my friend would be okay. I had no idea it was gonna happen to me, but that was the least of my concerns. There's no worse feeling in the world. I mean, to hear that your friend died in general is its a terrible thing. And to know that he died because of something I did that night it's traumatizing. I mean, for the rest of my life, it, it's going to bother me. I mean, there's no getting around it. There's no not thinking about it. Every time I look at my own mother, I think about it. I, mean, I took a son away from his mom and his dad. That's all I could think about. What I regret most I regret making the decision that I've been warned about so many times. It's like when your mom tells you don't touch the stove, it's hot, and you do it anyway. I mean, people tell me all the time don't drink and drive, and I have a family member who's been killed in a drunk driving accident, and I still didn't think about it enough to stop myself from doing something so stupid. I wasn't even 21 to begin with, and I drank, and then I made another bad decision, I drove. It cost my friend his life. If I can say one thing to the people out there around my age or younger, think more than twice about what you're doing. Getting home is the first thing you think of. I just want to get home, I want to sleep in my own bed, but how important is that when you could be sleeping in a jail cell and your friend could be in the hospital, in a hospital bed on life support or in a coma? I mean, the, the tragedies that can occur are so much, so much more important than where can I, how can I get to the next place I want to go tonight? How can I get home to go to sleep? more important than that. A week before Chris's death, I, my, one of my best friends and I were talking about all the foolish things we had done when we were younger. And we thought we were so fortunate because we escaped 
any horrible accidents, death, nothing ever happened to us because of the foolish things that we did. And then just a week later, I lose my brother. So it just goes to show you that you can never escape the mistakes that you make. Some way, somehow, it all comes around. Uh, if anybody is paying attention to this video, please stop and think. Nobody ever thinks it'll happen to them. If Chris was here, and if he could do it over again, he would do it so different. He, he wouldn't have got in the car. He wouldn't have allowed any of his friends to drive. He wouldn't have driven. Nobody would have driven. If Chris was here, he would, he would tell you that he made a mistake, that everybody in that car made a mistake. If there's one last thing I could add to this, it'd just be to Chris's parents and me just being able to tell them one more time that I'm so sorry for what happened. And I know there's nothing I can do to change what happened, but what I'm trying to do here is help someone else and so this doesn't happen to anybody else. And I wish every day I could switch places with Chris. I know it's not possible, no matter how much I wish it was true. But in Chris's memory, I'm hoping that someone will listen to this and it will save at least one life for Chris. I know what regret is. I'd give anything to change the past, to be right there where you are. I'd be more than careful from now on. I'd think more than twice. But I can't. I can't change things. Will you?